ACC fireworks from Charlottesville. Chris, 24th ranked Cavaliers taking on the second ranked Seminoles. And outside Scott Stadium, well, it might be a wine and cheese crowd out there. A little Chardonnay, maybe a little Brie. But inside, it's heating up because the Cavalier fans know that Florida State in the last four years has seen their opponents go down like a cold beer on a hot day. 29 straight conference wins for Bobby Bowden Seminole. The Wahoos of Virginia tonight hope to snap that long conference winning streak and hope to slow down the nation's number one offense. Virginia gets set for the second ranked Florida State Seminoles. They may have dropped to number two in the country, but it hasn't slowed down their top ranked offense. And this is the guy that makes it go. Senior Danny Cannell and Gary, he has really come of age in his senior season and they've got everything working. Well, they really do. He's got a lot of weapons on this football team and Danny Cannell makes it go. But the difference maker on this football team is not Danny Cannell, it's Warwick Dunn. He's the back in this offense. And if Virginia lets him run the ball and throw the ball him out of the back, Field, it's going to be tough. Brad, he reminds me of an Eric Metcalf type guy. They must control him in his football game or they won't slow down this offense. Well, I guess for Virginia, then it's going to take a perfect game to win, right? No, it's not going to take a perfect game for Virginia. What it's going to take is help from Florida State. If Florida State doesn't put the ball on the floor a couple times, I think it's going to be very tough. But Virginia shouldn't be intimidated. They played tough players. They have, and they've lost two games by only a point in the final play of the game this season. And Virginia will be kicking off and Rock Preston and Dee Feaster will await the kick from Rafael Garcia Virginia six and three five and one in the conference Florida State a perfect seven and oh and five and oh in ACC play the kick Preston from the three got an opening and across the 25 and out near the 28 yard line. That's where the Florida State offense will go to work. Danny Cannell is their leader. They got a fullback who is a load though. Pooh Bear Williams 10 rushing touchdowns and Warwick Dunn Gary is talked about. E.G. Green will start. It was a question mark because of a hamstring until about 10 minutes ago. Andre Cooper the big hitter and Kamari Charlton is a tight end. Lewis Tyre 40. Six starts in his career. Shiver is a Lombardi finalist. Bates, Hernandez, and Fordham round out the front wall for Cannell and company. First down, Seminole. Done. Got five to the 34. Virginia defensively. Todd White. He played high school ball against Warwick Dunn, and he was in on that stop out of Baton Rouge. A.G. Robertson and Ashman. Here's the leader in tackles, James Ferrier, Jones and Sharper, the rest of the linebacking court. Rondé Barber, all ACC in the secondary last year with Ellsworth, London, and Williams. From the line, Cannell with a call on a second down and four. Pumps wants to go deep sideline. Man open. He's got him out there and out of bounds. Andre Cooper made the catch, but he was wide of the line. Rondé Barber was covering. You can see the thought process already from this Virginia defense. Do not give Danny Cannell a lot of easy throws in this football game. So how does Florida State react? They go right away with a hitch and go. You can see his left foot came just out of bounds. But that sent a message to those defensive backs. Cannell's numbers 25 touchdowns. Comes up firing outside complete but hit immediately and I don't know if it's enough for a first. Philip Riley made the catch and I believe he got it. And that's really the trouble Brad that uh, Virginia's going to have putting pressure on Danny Cannell. I mean they just snapping the ball it's out of his hand. You can have the best pass rush going. You don't get to him. Third down 10. Florida State number one in the conference for their third down conversions this year. Cannell with time got hit as he threw and it's almost intercepted by Joe Rowe. Rondé Barber back there and Florida State will have to punt. Well, this team has forced turnovers, and that's the goal in this football game, is to force turnovers, make Cannell throw the ball down the field, and come up with some early turnovers in the game, get the offense, and play on a shortened field. Sean Liss to punt. Tiki Barber back deep. Nice high kick. 
Barber is going to have to take a fair catch call at the 19-yard line. 42-yard kick, and Virginia will go to work on offense for the first time tonight with their quarterback, Mike Grow. Grow, one of five finalists for the Unitas Award, and Cannell's on that list, too. Medley and Barber in the backfield. Demetrius Pete Allen. He'll have to pick up some of the slack with Patrick Jeffers out tonight. Jermaine Crowell starts for Jeffers, and Derry's the tight end. And Augustino, their best blocker at left tackle with Rayleigh, Lachlan, Slocum, and Harrison up front for Virginia, the 24th-ranked team in the country. Grow play action on the first play of the ball game, and wide open. And down the sideline across the 40 is Owen before he's knocked out of bounds. 22 yards on the opening play of the game. Play action pass is the way to keep that defensive front four from putting pressure. Virginia will shift in motion and play action pass. Owen is going to get this one. The dink and dunk try to keep that Florida State defense off balance in the football game. The key to that, Brad, though, Virginia must run the ball effectively to keep doing it. Here they run it for the first time. It's Tiki Barber. And he got a tough yard and a half before Capers got him from the secondary. Florida State defensively. Tyrant Marion, one of their captains, back after being out a couple of games with a knee injury. Wilson, Wadsworth, and Roy, the group up front. Todd Rebol, since he and Bush have come back, Florida State against the rush has been sensational. Sam Cohort, the other outside linebacker. And Sean Hamlet in the secondary out of Hampton, Virginia. Hammond, Roll, and Capers round out the secondary for Florida State. Second down and two. For Tiki Barber, hit in the backfield. And ball ball loose. loose. Florida State says they have it, and they do. I think Andre Wadsworth, number 85, the nose tackles, the guy who came right through that time and forced it. And talking to the Florida State coaches, they were really impressed with how he was coming on. Just as this ball is handed off, Wadsworth's back there. Marion is going to be the guy who ends up uh, with that football. But, boy, what a in the backfield before you hand off the ball. There's a turnover early in this football game already. So now Florida State by the length of the football in Virginia territory. Cheeky Barber almost co caught that thing up before he got hit on the play. The handoff was a bit high. Cannell flares it out to Dunn out of the backfield. And Dunn has got about six before Kearney came over there to make the hit. They do that a lot, Gary. That flare pass is dangerous. It, it really is because you've got a guy out there that you have to account for all the time. He, if he gets the ball and gets into the open field, he can go the old, all, all the way. Raynard Wilson, the man that recovered the fumble that set up this Florida State drive. Williams short of the first down. Todd White again in on the hit. Really interesting attack so far in this football game for uh, Florida State. They've been willing to run the ball inside. They've not thrown the ball down the field much. Just the first long pass. That was just a show-me pass. Nothing much else coming across the middle of the field so far. Third down three. Canal looks left and comes back to the right, complete to Riley, and he's got a first down at the 35. And that's what Danny Cannell does so well. Joe Williams corner that time was backed off so far maybe 10 yard cushion he just says all right if you're going to give me a first down I'm going to just throw it out there I'm going to slowly move you up and make you take away those hitches first down Florida State play action for Pinnell watch it all deep ball Riley overshot him by just a bit Paul London, the free safety that time, did a good job of getting back there. But if this would have been properly thrown, they could have had a touchdown. You'll see it, Danny Cannell, a little play action pass. We can stop it right here. There's London. There's the free safety right there, the guy who has to get back and get into the middle of the field. But watch how this thing freed up. That ball could have been caught if it had been just to the left of that receiver just a bit more. Second and 10 from the 35. Cannell, nice play fake. Rolls and throws, and Riley's got this one. For a touchdown. 35 yards. Cannell with his 26th touchdown pass of the year. Hard to imagine with the way 
Florida State can throw the football on, on nearly any play that you would forget to cover one of their wide receivers. And that's exactly what happened. This is going to be a bootleg, bootleg action. But you can see those offensive linemen have stood up. That is a pass key right there. And then running, actually trotting down the field, Phillip Riley is just the recipient of an easy one. And that is a gift of a touchdown. And you can't give any gifts to this team. They're going to grab some and steal some of their own. Bentley for the point after right down the middle. With eight minutes and five seconds remaining in the first quarter. Danny Cannell, as he has done so often this year. The man that throws the touchdown pass is 26th of the season. It's Florida State by a touchdown. Tiki Barber, who fumbled to start the Florida State drive. And Phil Riley is the guy that finished it off. Was overshot on a post pattern, but not the second time Cannell went to him to cap the 50 yard march, 35 yard touchdown pass. Riley's third TD reception of the year. Scott Bentley has it teed up. And that's Terrence Wilkins. Flanked by Demetrius Allen. Brad, I think I said earlier Northwestern in their upset of Penn State. Maybe I'm jumping ahead of the battle, but in <laughs> Wisconsin, when we saw that one against Penn State, they did not make any mistakes, didn't even have a penalty. That is bad news so far for Virginia in this football game. Pete Allen runs up on about the 14-yard line. And slips on his own as he got to the 25. Here's the type of unforced errors that I'm talking about if you want to win. Here's the two safeties, London and Ellsworth, and right here is Riley. Now, if you got two safeties back on a play-action pass, this is clearly a pass. Neither one of the safeties are any more than 10 yards deep. Well, that is a clear bust of a pattern. You can't, it's tough enough to cover these guys when you know where they are, let alone if you forget to follow them, and that is a bust that I'm sure defensive coordinator Rick Lance is very upset with. First down for the Cavaliers from the 25. Throw, play action, look out. He's going to keep it. I don't know if that was a busted player by design, but he got about six yards. <laughs> it worked, right? It worked. We're going to take it right now. <laughs> Mike Grow is the type of quarterback that has to keep this game under control. He's a highly accurate football player with the ball, and he knows he's been studying for this game. We, we talked to him, and he's been watching film with his dad, of course, the defensive coordinator for the New England Patriots for this game. Watched four tapes with him. He's been preparing for it for the summer. He is ready. This is his teammates ready to play to that level. Second down and a short four. And Barber's going to be just a little bit shy, I think. Seemed like Tiki Barber that time was uh, going into the line and trying to read a bit much. I'd like to see Tiki just hang in there, just fire into the line of scrimmage and make some things happen with that football. He has become a more physical football player by how, through hard work, as you look at his statistics. He's put on about 15 pounds, and he needs to show that physical football play that a lot of people have talked about has moved him to the next level. 1,000-yard plus season already. Third down and one. Two tight end set for the Cavaliers. Groh's going to do it himself or try. He didn't need much, but he didn't get much either. Todd Rebo came over the top, but it's a first down on the quarterback sneak. Groh, who came in as a relief quarterback for George Welsh last year against Florida State and threw two touchdown passes. Mike was 8 of 12, 92 yards, and a couple of touchdowns last year. We visited with George Wells yesterday. He said he affects and believes that his football team will play better because of the Michigan and Texas game. They've played great universities already. No use being intimidated by this team. Little option. Barber's got the corner already. Tiki Barber might have a touchdown. One man to beat. Forget it. He's gone. you call making up for an earlier fumble 64 yard touchdown well tiki barber is too fast to get him into the football field he turned that quarter he had an 81 yard run against michigan when you get him in space he shows how fast he is and i'll tell you one of the wide receivers jermaine crowell did a nice job of not clipping on that play and just bumping him he knew that barber had the corner and it was six points rafael garcia's point after is tied this game up 
second longest run allowed by Florida State all year, and that's the man that did it with 6.09 to go. First quarter, we're dead even in Charlottesville. George Welch, Cavaliers, go 75 yards in four plays, and 64 of it was in a hurry by Tiki Barber. Brad, execution gives you big plays, and in this execution, the quarterback's executed the option. But watch a couple of key blocks in this football play right here. Right after the pitch, stop it right there. This is Medley, the fullback. He's going to knock down the free safety Hamlin on this play. Then he's going. Then from the left side of your screen, Crowell, the sophomore's going to come in three right there. And watch how he doesn't throw the bump against Capers. He just nudges him off like a pick in basketball. He knew Barbers was going to score in that play. He didn't do anything dumb. They get a touchdown on the play. Very nice execution. Crowell did a nice job of not making a state mistake. Tiki Barber, tremendous speed. Despite the fact that he has bulked up a little bit and Tom O'Brien the offensive coordinator for the Cavaliers said you know some people thought he lost speed just because he got heavier. I didn't see any lack of speed there. Well, he was 4-2. Now, <laughs> yeah. he's, now he's slowed down to 4-3. <laughs> Garcia to kick. To the goal line. And Rock Preston will bring it. And got out to the 20. Nice hit on the special teams. Sam McKeever got down there to make the stop. So 3-3-5 three, three, front for the defense of Virginia. See the two out of five on third down conversions. Canal deep ball to Cooper, and this one he's got. Out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Kitchen go on Rondé Barber. If you've got a guy that makes a lot of interceptions, Remember, he wants to intercept the ball, so give him that little hitch and go. A little bit of a stutter right here. Rondé Barber thinks it's going to go. Actually, Cooper just ran right by him. I don't know what Barber was seeing on that play, and boy, put in the field of play that time, and Cooper almost stayed in and let him pass him by. First down, Florida State, the 35 of Virginia. Again, they swing it out of the backfield. Preston now in the open field. They have to drag him down at the 15. Paul London saved a touchdown, a 20-yard play out of the backfield. Another mental mistake by the Virginia defense. Preston just flared out of the backfield. No one goes with him. That is one of those things you have to account for the back. Look, they blitz. No one goes with the halfback. That's the A-back. That is one of the five legal receivers. When you blitz, you have to account for five legal receivers. Catch an easy one, and Derek, Danny Cannell is great at going to the guy that you don't cover. From the 14. Canal to Dunn. Dunn got around a man and got in the end zone. Dunn. Wow, he just ran by one defender and goes 14 yards for the score. Dunn done it. Yep. When that man catches the ball in space, he is so hard to contain. Caught it, made one guy miss, walked into the end zone. Your turn, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> And he'll be out there in a minute. Scott Bentley first for the point after for Florida State. Canell's hold is down and 14 to 7. And just that quickly, Florida State and Warwick Dunn make it 14 7. And this is the changeup in this play right now. Both Preston and Dunn are in the game. Dunn is lined up at fullback. That is something that Florida State did not show, and that's what confused the Virginia defense a bit. When you have a shotgun, you got a lot of weapons, you just use them. Warwick Dunn lined up a different spot. They got him the ball, and they score. Warwick Dunn's third touchdown catch of the year. But they had a couple of big plays. Remember, Barber got beat on that hitch-and-go type thing when Cannell faked it and threw the ball belong to Cooper. They are really throwing the ball around and using all their weapons. Allen camps under this one up at nine. Pete Allen got a seam. Stiff arm didn't work. Bumped out of bounds by Dexter Jackson. Second and five. Grow rolls off play action. Wide open is Medley, the fullback. And Medley all the way to the 42-yard line. 21 yards on that one. 
This football team lost at fullback Charles Way from a year ago, but Medley has come in and he has shown with his blocking early in this game and now with a bootleg and sliding that fullback out in the flat that that is how you can drive a defense nuts, getting those guys out to the corners and making that defense cover the short flats. And if they're going to play a lot of zone, what Florida State likes to do in midfield, you can take advantage of that. Here they come where they like the blitz, though. And here it comes. And Grow rifles it. Incomplete right in the eight on Derek Bird's jersey, and he forgot to take the football along. Derek Bird was a high school quarterback who asked to move to wide receiver. They think he has tremendous potential. He was wide open, and Grove put it right there, and he just coughed it up. Tom O'Brien's doing a nice job of keeping this Florida State defense off balance, though. Virginia in the ball game in the first quarter turned it over twice and Florida State turned both into points. Fumble by Tiki Barber, the interception by Grow. And a penalty on Florida State. And a big walk one. off of 15, a 15 roughing the yards. passer. So first down at the 28 yard line. Stop watching the ball. I didn't see that. I was watching that pass that time. From the 28 for the Seminole. The give, Brooks. And Brooks powers his way close to the 20 before Sean Hamlet can make the stop to end the first quarter. Well, it's been a good one through 15 minutes. The number two team in the country is leading, but by only a touchdown, and Virginia on the march. Now the Seminoles came into this one a little bit steamed over being dropped in the national rankings from number one to number two. I think that steam's coming off right now with being upset on that defense that they have not been able off oh, the defense have not been able to slow this football team down. Virginia with a second down and three. Throw off play action. Incomplete intended for his big tight end, Bobby Neely, who they really looked too early in the season, had a huge game against Michigan and was injured in that one, and they have missed him. Yeah, they really do. He's the guy that can get vertical at the, the tight end position, man-on-man -man coverage this time into the secondary. Capers does a good job of cutting down him off downfield, and you saw Neely, he wanted, he knew he got hit, and the ball was in the air, and he wanted the call. Now it's a third down and three. Just inside the Florida State 21. State thinking about a blitz. But do more than thinking about it. They're coming. Rose taking his time, gives it off to Brooks straight up the middle. He's got a first down at the 15. Sam Coard made the tackle, but Kevin Brooks, the senior, picks up the first down. Nice patience that time by Mike Grove, giving his offensive lineman time to see what was happening and going to an inside trap play. I don't know if he had that play on or he audibled, but it is an effective play against a blitz. Everyone's coming hard at you. You just trap inside. You might be able to pop it. And as you look at the rushing yard, remember a big play there was on that option play to Barber. Barber. 64 yards on a touchdown. But they'll take that rushing total for the night. They'll take the first down at the 15 of Florida State. Bootleg. Grow has to rifle it to Medley. And the fullback trying to bull his way toward the goal line. He's close. Down to the three. First and goal. So effective slipping that fullback out into the flat against teams. Not a lot of teams use their fullback a lot, but off of the play action, this is a bootleg to the outside. If your quarterback can get that ball to them to the outside, you're going to force the safety. This time it's Hammond to come up and have to make the hit. And Virginia will go with a two fullback type set. Medley behind Kirby. An extra lineman, an extra tight end. First and goal. Medley. Down to about the one and a half. Don't expect much passing from that formation. They had Trevor Britton, number 63, as your flanker back. And now the substitution pattern is going to change for Virginia. They're going to be in a wide receiver and give them a little bit more, some more versatility. Tiki Barber is also in the game as they take Britton out. Second and goal. Second and goal is the passing down in goal line offense. Jermaine Crowell is on a slot to the right side. Throw. Barber, touchdown. Great call. 
Tiki Barber took a rifle shot, low throw from Grove for the score. If you talk to defensive players, they tell you that this tight formation down at the goal line is the toughest formation to stop on the play action passes. Not a lot of teams use it in the right situation. Second down is the time you use it because everyone's still thinking run and you have to sell out for the run. Rafael Garcia's extra point is good. With 13.26 to go in the half from Charlottesville. You could call him Tiki Torch. He's lit up Florida State for two scores. Civil War Memorial in front of the Albemarle County Courthouse erected back in 1908 to honor the local Confederate soldiers who died in the Civil War. Tiki Barber, one on the ground and one through the air. And we're tied at 14. Let's check in with Jerry Punch, Doc. Hey, guys, we're doing the staff today. Uh, on game days, he gets up at 4 a.m. in the morning, and he can't eat all day. Back when he was coaching for Joe Paterno, he saw Paterno eat a hot dog prior to a game. He said, how can you do that? I gag on my toothpaste. My stomach just won't allow me to do anything but breathe on a game day. Hey, George could have a four-touchdown lead, and he'd still look like he had acid indigestion. Uh, and he was tight yesterday, and all of his assistant coaches knew it. He just said, leave him alone. That's what you do the day before a game. Garcia's kick. Just caught the corner out of bounds at about the one yard line. And so Florida State will get it to 35 if they so choose. Third down a yard. High throw. Riley doesn't handle it. Knocked out of his hands by Joe Williams. Riley had it in his hands, but Joe Williams, the sophomore out of Chesapeake, popped him in the back and it came out. It appears that Florida State is going to punt this ball. I'm a little surprised. They hit you something. You're giving them right here. Florida State, the ball was very catchable that time. Riley coughs it up. But those are the type of plays that you have to make as a defense. Come up and let that receiver know whether you catch it or not, you're going to get rocked. Third three and out. List set to punt. Pooh Bear Williams is the up man. They are going to punt it, though, and it's blocked. And a chance here is Owen. Takes it down to the 20. And it was James Ferrier who blocked the kick. James Ferrier, the junior linebacker, is the guy who blocked it. You're exactly right. And Bill Brian Owen, number 29, is the guy who scoops it up, has the presence that he knows he can pick it up. Ferrier comes right up the gut, number 42, and actually gets blocked by Pooh Bear on the play and still makes the uh, attacking kick. Third down, seven, Virginia. Tie game, 11.25 to go in the half. Here comes the blitz. Rowe steps up, waits, goes short, incomplete to Crowell. He couldn't handle it. Coverage by Samari Roll out there. And now it's going to bring on the field goal unit. And they've got a kicker that's got a serious leg, Rafael Garcia. And Garcia had a kick against Texas that he thought won the game, and it ended up it didn't come true. He hit a 56-yarder to tie a school record. There you see his long of the year, 56 and 14 of 20 overall. They're going to only ask him for about a 36-yarder here. Tim Sherman, the backup quarterback to hold. Who is a quarterback. That's right. Garcia for the lead. Right down University Avenue. 11-16 to go in the half, and oh, look what we got. Virginia leading second-ranked Florida State. Well, this is not just a Virginia soccer game here in Charlottesville. This is pretty big. This is 40,000 plus to look up at the scoreboard and see Virginia leading second ranked Florida State and not many people have led Florida State during the course of the season. How about 300 minutes and they've been behind less than five of those 300 minutes. Well, I can tell you one thing. You can start the clock running right now because <laughs> here we go. It might not take long to yeah. turn around. But all of a sudden, the Seminoles know that they are in a battle. Absolutely, Virginia would love to get this game into the fourth quarter. They have more experience on this football team with tight football games than Florida State does. They've had two tight ones, as we talked about already. Mike Rose says, get into the fourth quarter, I'll win it for you. Garcia, who just gave them the lead, got it teed up. away. Brock Preston runs up on a high kick at the 14. And 
Preston out across the 30 to the 32. And Florida State will work there offensively with 11 minutes and 11 seconds to go in the half. It's second down and 10. Florida State at the Virginia 25. Cannell down the middle. Well, a nice coverage, but still got it to Damian Harrell. And Ferrier made the hit. I think the key so far in this football game, something we talked about, is they have not been able to get pressure on Danny Cannell. That jersey, they don't even have to wash it so far in this football <laughs> game. Throws the ball, that's like throwing seven on seven. The offensive linemen aren't even on the field. He has not been touched, not a speck of dirt. Another third down. This time they will keep it on the ground, and it's going to be short. Dunn is about a yard shy of the first down marker. Well, I was surprised that Florida State did not go for the first down last time at midfield. This time I'd be surprised if they kick a field goal. They are not a great field goal kicking football team. I think they'll go for the first down. Looks like it. Bring in the tight end, Pearsall. Now, what I'm not so sure of is whether they'll go shotgun or not. <laughs> There's Scott Bentley, who would have liked to have had the chance to tie it up, I'm sure. And at the 17-yard line, it's fourth down and that much. Toss to Dunn. He wants to throw an option back to Cannell, and he's in trouble. And now he's going to go down. pass all the way I'll tell you play the defense call and what happened here is the two corners the guys playing the wide guys played the defense number 33 Jamie Sharper covered his man there you see it Ellsworth stayed with his man everybody downfield was covered and nobody to throw the ball to and Dunn had two receivers one being Cannell E.G. Green was downfield that's exactly I, I, you know they tried to steal quick points I just think run the ball inside gets your first down there Instead two times they, they tried to trick on short yardage play instead it's a first down for Virginia and it's Tiki Barber for a quick nine he's over a hundred in the first half down nearing the five minute mark and Tiki Barber, one of only two backs to go over 100 yards against Florida State last year in the 94 season, has done so already again tonight. And we are only in the half. A third down upcoming and about a dozen to go. Virginia is going to have to earn this one. Two out of five on the night of their third down conversions. Throw, play action, deep streak for Pete Allen. He made the catch, and he's going to go. 72 yards. adjustment on it for the catch and then the two defenders collided and that was it Florida State is really gambling in this football game a minute ago fourth and inches they try to halfback pass this situation it was third and 14 and they brought an all-out blitz and what man-to-man -man coverage to the outside anything can happen when you do that Garcia's point after is good and Virginia leads by 10 Three minutes and five seconds left in the half. Pete Allen does a nice job against Roll here. Watch how he uses his back and slows down. He's not open by a lot. Pass is going to be. He comes back inside, gets in front of his defender. Now watch how he slows down, bumps, and then goes to the outside and makes that catch. One guy trips over another, but I don't know if they would catch Allen on that play anyway. And all of a sudden, the scoreboard changes again. Longest reception of the year for Demetrius Pete Allen, 72 yards from Mike Grove. Garcia set to kick. Oh, he got all of this one. Adrenaline is flowing. Feaster has got to take a knee, and it'll be Florida State at the 20-yard line. Bobby Bodden said coming into this one, we haven't been tested yet this year, and as only Bobby could say tonight, we're fixing to get tested. I'd say they are getting tested with 244 left in the half. First down at the 49. Canal out to Dunn in the flat. Dunn puts a move on and gets what he can down the sideline, and wisely takes it after 
13 more out of bounds. Florida State number two in the country. Nebraska now on top with Iowa State next up for them. Following this one, Florida State a week from Saturday at North Carolina. Florida, Northern Illinois, Ohio State at Minnesota, Tennessee, and Southern Miss get together. There's your top five teams. Again, Canal throws on the run and too, too high for Cooper. It'll be second down to 10. That'll stop the clock. 226 left in the first half. Well, Virginia right now, obviously, you know, with Florida State doing maybe, I, I think, personally, a little bit too much gambling in this football game. I, I don't understand why they have to try some of the things they're trying in this game. They are clearly able to move the ball with just their regular plays. I don't need to see why they have to try these halfback passes and bootlegs on the two-yard line. They've kept Virginia in the game so far. Canell, plenty of time. Hit as he threw, though. And it was Dwayne Ashman. Well, I'll tell you, Ashman didn't knock him down, but at least he got in his face. And that is a key so far. The one time earlier in the game, Harris got in his face, and he threw an interception. This time, Ashman, number 94, comes around the end. He's got Hernandez, number 77, pushing him, but he pushed him right into the throwing lane. And I don't know, you get right in his face, and that's what you make him do. When you want a quarterback that you can't get to, you've got to get in the passing lane. Third down and 10. Goodell deep middle. He's got green again. Green on the cross and into the end zone. Touchdown. 38 yards and nobody touched him. Well, that's the third touchdown in this game that people have trotted into the end zone. <laughs> That's when you're really throwing the foot. That's what I mean. That is just bread and butter pass play right there. They don't have to do anything fassy. Crossing route over the middle of the field, just throw it in the hole. When you've got an accurate quarterback, you don't have to get fancy. You've got great talent. Let's use plays one through five. We don't need play 35. <laughs> Green questionable until about 10 minutes before game time, and I think he's answered all the questions with his performance here in the second quarter. The touchdown, an extra point, has cut it down to Virginia 24, Florida State 21. Three-point Virginia lead with 2.13 left in the halves. Bentley. Demetrius Allen, who scored the last time he touched it. Whoa! What a hit at the 25 that was. That stopped your forward progress, Pete. Just over two minutes left in the half. <laughs> Going to go to Tiki Barber on third and 12, and Barber breaks out on the screen pass down the sideline and out of bounds. Got what he could, got to the 37, and then got out of bounds. And Jeffers knows that maybe Mike Groh, his best buddy and roommate, would have gone to him. Had he been on the field instead, Tiki Barber turns on the Jets again, Garrett. Tiki Barber, number 21, and really what jumps out on this play is Tiki Barber, when he turns a quarter, watch him run away from Samari Roll, number two, this time. Boom, Roll, get it going. Uh-oh, you ain't going to catch him. And now those two timeouts that Florida State used have now turned around and started helping Virginia in this game. I mean, let's look all the way. Mike Groh's going to check off. He's got man-to-man -man coverage in the bottom of the field. Everybody up close. Here they come. Groh's going to try to go deep for Allen. And he almost made a juggling catch. Samari Roll, number two on number two out there. That was the coverage. Allen did a nice job again. Allen is not the fastest receiver that, you know, but goes about 4-4, four, 4-5 four, four, speed. But Groh puts the ball up, and when it's in the air, I like the offensive chances all the time in this situation. That ball could have got caught, and Roll is saying, this is no fun, Coach Andrews. <laughs> Put me out on that island. It is lonely out there. This is a nationally televised game, and I'm going to limp a little bit back to the sideline here. Rafael Garcia, who made his collegiate debut last year against Florida State, oh, and hit this, a 40-yard field goal. This must be a fake here. I'm going to be surprised. 48-yarder. He's got all kinds of leg, and he's going to put that baby right through there. Whoa. You're going for it. That surprised me. Because you're going to give the ball to Florida State with plenty of time if you don't make that one. They really have a lot of faith in this kid, though, with a 56-yarder to his credit, as you were talking about earlier, Gary. And they just said, let's go get three more, and well, they did. There is not a breath of wind in the stadium right here. So they, they went with a good kicker, and this one's going to come right in your lap here because it just barely killed the, uh, go, went across the crossbar, and it was <laughs> right into the camera. Almost got our camera. <laughs> Halftime from Scott Stadium. The Wahoos are hooing it up. The Cavaliers lead the Seminoles 27-21.
halftime at Scott Stadium. The hometown Cavaliers try to pull a shocker over second ranked Florida State 27 21. Welcome back everybody. Brad Nessler and Gary Danielson. Gary, I like Florida State's offense as much as the next guy but it hasn't <laughs> shown a lot of patience here tonight I don't think and they've taken some chances maybe they didn't have to. Well that's what I think. I mean they've got a team that can obviously move the football. Danny Cannell when he's accurate I mean they're going to move get first downs. They've just lost the patience. They've had some miscues. First time shotgun from the two yard line. Try a trick play. Ellsworth comes up with the interception. Then the miscue on the block punt. When you get a punt block, things go bad. O'Brien picks up this ball. Virginia gets points on the board. And then a fourth down and inches play. Bobby Bowden gets a bit tricky. But I think the most important thing is Virginia played the defense. They stayed with it. And they got a huge. That's like a turnover in this game. Florida State obviously gets no points. They stay in the game. And I think one other key play in this as we look at the halftime stats. And what points out is how even the offense is here is remember that third and 14 Mickey Andrews calls an all out blitz and it turns into seven points for Virginia some strange gambling that hasn't worked out well for, for Florida State so far in this game both teams with turnovers and Virginia with a lead by six they've never had a team rank this high come in here and Bobby Bowden's second rank Seminoles and as Craig and Lee and Chris were talking about Maybe regardless of what happens in this second half, does Florida State drop in the polls? Well, we still got a lot of football left. And it's going to be Allen, who has a good touchdown catch to his credit tonight to open things up, and he's going to be stopped short of the 20 in the kickoff return as we talk. Third down 10. Crow, the middle, got it to Crowell for the first down at midfield. Hammond made the tackle, but Jermaine Crowell, a sophomore out of Winston-Salem, North Carolina, with a catch. Brad, Mickey Andrews in these long situations, this is what I usually expect from a Mickey Andrews defense. He likes to combo people. This guy and this guy are going to take pro, but he take, comes right in the middle right there and gets the catch. When you got two guys covering you, you hook right in between them, stop, a good throw can beat double coverage. It did for the first down at midfield. Crow play action. Throws the out, Scott. Pete Allen. Out of bounds, first down. Row sharp here to start the third quarter. Well, Pete Allen is a guy who's got plenty of experience. He's a true senior. He's played as a true freshman. He's a four-year starter for this football team. He's not going to get overly excited about the game, and he has had a really productive foot game in this so far early, and he's really catching the ball with his hand so far and keeping everything in front. George Welsh's club on the ninth play of their drive with a third and ten. No blitz this time. Grow, plenty of time. Throws complete to Owen. Has he got a first down? I think so. Virginia just so well coached. When you see that bracket coverage, and that's what Tom O'Brien knew he was going to get, in and out coverage on your wide receivers, you just go down the field and hook in between them. Both guys got you. One guy's got you to the outside, one guy's got you to the inside. You stop in between them, you throw the hook, and you can Colsey and Hammond that time. Key comes over and help, but boy, that is perfect execution against bracket coverage. Third down and two. Huge third down and two for the Florida State defense. The opening march of the third quarter for the Cavaliers. Tiki Barber. I don't know. Down on the bottom of the pile. Looks like he's a little bit short of the first down to me. Sam Cohort. The linebacker made the hit. That's a nice stop by that Florida State defense that time. Bouncing Tiki Barber outside, a little bit of a traffic. And now Josh Welch is saying, I didn't want that play. I wanted to play outside. What are you running inside for? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's great to be the guy that always can second guess. We like it up here, don't right. we? Right, we love it. Yeah. Fourth down, and they're not going to go for the field goal. Here comes an extra tight end. George right then wanted them to hurry up and snap the ball before they substituted their defense. They got the defensive substitution in. Florida State's been stingy in second half, and so now Groh's got to hustle the count. Fourth down, less than a yard. Trying to draw him offside. And flags fly in. Well, it's going to be delay a game. He did try to dry them off, but uh, I think with the field goal kicker they have, they figure they can kick five yards farther back yep. so they can from here also. Dead ball. Delay of the game. Five yards. Fourth down. So they'll take it out to about the 23. It's going to be about a 40-yard kick. And 
And here's George Welsh before the play. Snap the ball. Snap the ball. I, I, I don't know. He must have had a play on. But, you know, if you're the quarterback and things don't feel right up there, you don't feel your guy's set, you just can't go if the team's not ready. Mike Grove might have said, Coach, I didn't think we were ready. Garcia now has hit two for two tonight. Try a 40-yarder. Not a very good snap. A nice placement put down by Sherman, and Garcia got it. And I got a little bit of a hook with that left footer coming in there right in between. Ten minutes, 38 seconds. Bobby Bowden looks up at the scoreboard and sees his team down nine. Ten minutes and 38 seconds remaining third quarter. 30-21, Virginia. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, Jerry Punch with you from Scott Stadium in front of a sellout crowd in Charlottesville. And they've seen the Wahoos lead from the 17 to 14 mark thanks to a Garcia field goal and now Rafael's just tacked on another one and now it's that odd difference nine points still a long long way to go though especially with a quarterback to put up 300 yards passing on you in the first half exactly it's a long way to go Tom O'Brien talking with Mike Groh Danny Cannell on the sideline awaiting his chance Jermaine Green and D. Feaster await Garcia's kick. That's a good one. Feaster will take it a yard deep. And Feaster still on his feet across the 25, doesn't want to go down, and finally does at the 30. Nine point Florida State deficit, 515 in the third. Here's Warwick Dunn. And Dunn got out to the 38 Wally Rayner the freshman with a tackle let's check in with Jerry Punch talk to Cavalier head coach George Welch at halftime ask him what his concern I said what concerns you most in the second half he looked at me straight in the eyes said the Florida State offense they're frightening they're explosive we've been very successful going from our 4-3 to our 3-4 rushing three men we've got to be that successful in the second half and have our offense keep their offense off the football field there's the three rushing but Cannell off play action he is getting Harry back there in the pocket and throws it away wisely and again Danny has to pick himself off the turf Todd White was back there in his face as was Dwayne Ashman you look at this defense what you're going to see is a picket fence everybody stay in their zone the linebackers are going to back up just stay at home stay at home spread yourself out Keep the quarterback and the receivers in front of you and force Danny Cannell to make some tough throws. That's the object. Third down along four. Cannell rolls and fires. Threw it in and hit his intended receiver, Cooper, but he got popped as he tried to haul it in. And it's incomplete. Skeet Jones, the middle linebacker that time, did a nice job. And Jamie Sharper, number outside linebacker, just stayed in there. Jones reacted to the ball and came and got a hit on the play. And Sharper, number 33, is the guy who got the kick just as the ball got there. Fourth time, it's been three and out for the Florida State offense. Sean Liss has had one block and almost the last time, too. And here comes a 10-man rush again. Lazy end over end kick. Tiki Barber, fair catch, dropped it, but scooped it up at the 30-yard line. Second and 17, Brooks on the draw, and he got back to the original line of scrimmage. So it's going to bring up a third and 10. And that is going to do it for quarter number three. Virginia's Cavaliers trying to stop the long streak of Florida State. They've beaten 29 in a row in conference play. It's in some serious jeopardy. The end of three from Charlottesville. It's Virginia 30, the Seminoles of Florida State 21. Don't go away. For the first time since the Florida regular season game of a year ago, Florida State trails at the end of three quarters. Yeah, I remember that one. I think everybody who's a Florida State and Florida fan remember 31 to three after three quarters. I don't think 31, 30 to 21 scares you all that much. That's after probably that. right. Game not over. <laughs> At the 34, second down and 10, Virginia. The give inside to Tiki Barber, straight up the middle. 
first down Cavaliers. Boy, he went 13 yards about as fast up the middle of the field as you can. There's delayed draws, and then there's quick-hitting draws. This was a quick-hitting draw. Watch Tiki Barber. He starts before he gets the ball. Boom, he's hit it. Trap up front in the middle. They get a good block from Slocum on number 64, and we're into the secondary before everybody turns their head. Remember, Virginia's had a couple of starts in Florida State territory this half that have not produced points. The last one was another interception by Roll inside the five. And then the high snap where they didn't get anything exactly. to Exactly. At the 21. This is what I would do, I think, is give it to a guy like Tiki Barber because he's already closing in on 140 yards on the ground. Don't forget, Sports Center follows us. 45 left in this game that would be not only a huge upset in the ACC but a huge huge upset as far as the rankings in college football. Bobby Bowden knows that trust me he's not thinking about that right now he's thinking about trying to get the ball back and getting his offense to not go three and out as they've done five straight times and there's Barber's numbers I say 140 I stand correct at 160 and here he comes again. Down to the 16-yard line. Capers put the hit on him. Such a huge difference, though, with a nine-point lead. The difference between a field goal and a touchdown here for Virginia. You know, you, you add it up, 9-3-12, two touchdowns still beat you. You put that touchdown on the board, and that changes the whole complexion of the football yeah. game. Don't think Tom O'Brien and that staff doesn't realize that. They want to get in the end zone here. They just don't want to settle for three points. If they do get a touchdown and they get a one-point conversion, that would be a two-touchdown and two two-point conversions for Florida State just to tie. Barber. Great defense that time. Sam Cohen, number 56, stayed inside, read the play. They figured it was going to be an inside run play. The linebackers finally getting involved. You see, when you run right at the defense, those linebackers push and forward and Rebo can make plays. So here comes the field goal unit. They clear away from Rafael Garcia to let him set up shop himself. It'll be right at the 25, a 35 yard field goal attempt. Perfect tonight. Remember, the last snap was not a great snap. See his kick is good. Four for four for Garcia. And Bobby Bowden looks up there and said, well, it's still only a dozen. We're down with 6.57 left to go. Under seven minutes from Scott Stadium. The party is almost ready to start, but still some unfinished business on the field. Florida State trailing by 12. The streak, 6.57 from being broken, and a chance at a national championship obviously will be vanishing unless Danny Cannell and the Florida State offense can find some fire here in a hurry. If I was Danny Cannell, I wouldn't be one bit worried about this time. There's plenty of time in this football game. I know how fast we can do it. And I think Florida State needs to do is throw the ball a little deeper now. They've been throwing the ball in short hooks. They need to hit medium range, about 15 to 20 yard passes across the middle into the outside. Garcia just jacks a kickoff. They'll have to go 80 to get their first one. Cannell not flawless in the first half, but huge numbers in the first half and almost none in the second. He really has been out of sync, obviously, with those stats, but he just has not been able to get an offense in sync. They've had poor field position the second half, and they've been trying to hit those hitches. They need to get the ball a little deeper behind those linebackers. His counterpart, Mike Groh, on the Virginia sideline would be the biggest win of his career if this holds. First and 10, Florida State. Bennell, that's a lateral. That's a double pass coming up. Dunn going deep for Cooper. And he got him at the 50. Warwick Dunn, that's not the first time he's thrown a pass this year. Second completion for him. This one good for 33 yards. Bobby Bowden always brings a lot of trick plays with him when they come, and that's the first trick play that's worked in this first in this game so far. It's the second pass attempt. You're exactly right, Brad. Look at it. It's a lateral. Cooper goes downfield that time. And London and Ellsworth have to react to it. Now back to his quarterback throwing. 
Down inside the 35, complete to E.G. Green. And now here comes the Gulf Coast offense, starting to click, pick up a 13 and a first down. And that's the first time that Danny Cannell has had no one in his face in plenty of time. When you're only rushing three guys, that offensive line needs to give him longer time to throw the ball and no one in his face. Looks right and now pumps and goes for Green again. And he's got it inside the 10. Just like that first and goal seminal. And that's the area that I'm talking about that they need to attack this zone defense. They need to throw the ball downfield in the 20-yard range. There's two in a row that they've thrown, and they just like that. You know, it doesn't even take a minute to move the ball down the field against the zone defense when you have this type of an offense. And you can hear a collective inhale at Scott Stadium from 44,000 people. They're going to uh oh Timeout with six minutes and 18 seconds remaining in the ball game. Florida State down by 12, but driving. Their first six drives this half netted them 19 yards. This one's taking them 73 yards in a hurry. Virginia's going to have to score again, I think, to win this football game. And probably more than a field goal. Riley Green and Cooper, the wide out for Cannell, who's under center, but he'll keep it on the ground. And Dunn, Dunn, dives. Got there, touchdown. So make it an 80-yard march, and it only took them about 40 seconds. That's about it, isn't it? <laughs> well, the field goal came with 6.57, and now we've got 6.13 left. And Florida State will go for two here. Well, I'm not sure. They, they've got the kicker on and Cannell on at the same time. I'm not sure one does them much more good than the other, but yeah. maybe, it, maybe it does in the long run when you start adding things up if Virginia got another field goal. Well, I yeah, haven't had time exactly to go right. into that. It makes it an eight-point game, but, you know, Florida State can't afford a tie in this game either. And so, remember, they have had trouble even with extra points at times this year. But I, but I think the call here is the extra point. I would agree with the one point. Scott Bentley. He's only missed two this year. I shouldn't say that's a lot of trouble considering how many touchdowns they score. Tucked it in the left side. Nice kick by Bentley because that ball was dropped. It was not handled well by the holder that time, and Bentley followed through and got the kick. There's a flag down on the play, however. Penalty marker, offside Virginia is the preliminary call we get from Courtney Mozzi, our referee. Offside on the defense. Ten lies on the kickoff. Extra point is good. Have you seen two guys that have Tiki Barber and Warwick Dunn type of speed when they hit the corner? No, I, I really haven't seen a lot of players. I mean, Metcalf is a guy I think of who he runs like, but it just turns the corner. You can have an angle on him if you want him. Ferrier does, but Warwick Dunn just gets into the end zone. And then the hold, we talked about the extra point. Cannell is the holder on this play. He bobbles it off the ground, and Bentley makes a perfect job of just trusting his holder, going through with the kick, and making the kick. Well, Dunn and Barber have both done their work tonight. Tiki Barber has the better numbers, but uh, that big touchdown by Warwick Dunn helps the look of his evening, without a doubt. Two all-ACC running backs. Both with over 1,000 last year. Barber well over that already this season. One minute. The fans here were tasting a big upset. Now they're gargling. <laughs> they went from Chardonnay to Listerine right. in a hurry, didn't they? Now they're nervous. You bet. 80 yards, four plays in 44 seconds. That's what Florida State just did. Bentley to kick. The luxury that short drive allowed them to. They don't have to worry about onside kicks and all of that. Just blast it away and try to get it back with your defense. Allen from the two. And he goes only to about the 16-yard line. Lamont Green made a nice job to make the tackle on the special teams. Bobby Bowden is working that gum. And we've got the Sports Center gang working too, but they're going to have to wait another six minutes and eight seconds. Worst starting position of the half for the Cavaliers. 
Tiki Barber with a blocker in front. He got the corner again. Out to the 34, maybe the 35-yard line. 19-yard scamper, and now he's closing on a career high in this game. That may give it to him, as a matter of fact. 182, he's about one more carry away from his best, which is 185. What a huge game for a guy who fumbled in the opening quarter. <laughs> you don't remember that, do you? No, that's impossible to remember. There's been 700 yards of offense in the first <laughs> half afterwards. Remember, they have not come back to that option play since that early touchdown. Same play the other way. Crowell in motion. Same there play it is. the other Same way. Play. going to go for a career high at 185 against Duke. He's past that here. We check in with Jerry Punch. Hey, guys, if you're in the numerology, check this out. Virginia had lost 29 consecutive times to Clemson before George Welsh came here as head coach. Florida State has beaten 29 consecutive ACC opponents. And the main road that runs right in front of Scott Stadium, you guessed it, Highway 29. <laughs> And the Seminoles thought they were living right when they realized their hotel was on Seminole Trail last night when they arrived. But maybe that wasn't a good omen after all. Still a lot of football left, though. Just under five minutes. Second down four. Florida State brings a blitz. And it pays off as they're able to clog up the middle and bring Barber down after a short gain. It'll be third down and a huge two coming up. Danny Cannell now is feeling good about himself. He isn't going to remember those stats, doesn't even get concerned about it. He's going back to the positive vibes of that Florida comeback and that big throw he made against Notre Dame when that game was tight and he had hit, hit won that football game. This is positive on that sideline. I think Virginia's going to have to gamble a bit more. they got to make a first down. They can't give him the ball back right now. They've got a full four to go on third down. Keep it on the ground, and it comes up short. About a yard, maybe not, maybe a couple of feet. Sam Cord put the stop on Barber, and now it's fourth down and less than one. Yeah, I don't think punt. you have any choice. You got to punt it. George Wells bouncing around on the sideline. Here comes his punter, Will Bryce. Who's done a great job dropping them inside the 10 yard line. Not tonight. only that, but catching three snaps very high. They've been flirting with danger at the high snap. 59 is long tonight. He's not worried about 59 here. Ooh, another. Lays up a beauty. Feaster takes it at the nine. And got about six on the return. Nice job on the special teams. Rowe got down there along with Phelan and made the hit. But remember, it only took Danny Cannell and Florida State 44 seconds to go 80 yards last time. The question is, can they go 85 with plenty of time? So, so what happens now? Does the experience from the Michigan and Texas game help Virginia in this fourth quarter? Or does the snake bit feeling of those two losses haunt you in the back of your mind and a big play happens to you? That's what makes this game great here as we watch this last three minutes. They've lost three games by six. Seven points total this year. Dunn out of the back to put a great move on. And he got almost 10 yards. Skeet Jones, one of the linebackers, made the tackle. This is where Florida State has the advantage. They don't worry about a huddle. They just walk up there. They don't, but uh, Virginia has kept their guys fresh for this drive right here. Let's see if they can get a sack or make a play. Cannell pumps once, now fires out in the flat, in and out of the hands of Cooper. He's having trouble, and maybe it's the arm injury, but he's dropped some tonight, and he doesn't drop many. It is, but, uh, you know, it's second in the yard right here. They still have two more downs for it. Now it's third down. Ball thrown to the outside. Cannell wanted to go deep with it. He settled for the easy throw, and you see Cooper try to beat the guy. It was Poindexter again before he caught the ball. Still two plays. Wouldn't be surprised to see the draw here on third down. Third down, a long yard. First. Got to make the first down. Still plenty of time in this football game. They Florida had missed State. their last six third down conversions until that one. But this was the first one that they had a position with just, you know, third and a couple yards right. to, be, to go for it. Two timeouts for Florida State, just one for Virginia. Should State put something on the board? Under three minutes. To an upset or a miracle comeback for the Seminole. Canal flushed. Throws deep middle, intercepted. 
picked off by Ellsworth. Ellsworth's second interception of the night and his sixth of the year. And what a huge time to come up with it. Percy Ellsworth is the safety back here. He is going to read Cannell's eyes the whole way. Watch as he comes out. And Danny Cannell makes the biggest mistake you could make as a quarterback. Going one direction and throwing across the middle of the field. If you aren't sure of it, it costs him an interception. And that's the second interception, key interception that Ellsworth's made. And remember the tip he had on that one, too. Just on the Florida State side of the 50, but now it's back in Virginia territory thanks to the hit for loss Henry Crockett dropping and this game is Barber. not over though the one the pride first. of Druryville Virginia right there he's tonight. had a tremendous football game the whole defense the game plan has been perfect but Danny Cannell got greedy he got greedy on a play that he should not have thrown the ball across the middle of the field rolling to his right and he might pay for it he wants one more chance he might not get it second down at 14. Tiki Barber's got a hole on the left side. It closed rather quickly, but he got near the 46-yard line. Right? That, Art Wilson made the tackle. The key thing was Mike Grow that time snapped that ball with one second on the 25-second clock. Florida State is forced to use one of their remaining two timeouts. With 1.51 left, timeout, don't go anywhere. Virginia trying to cling to a five-point lead. One minute and 51 seconds separates Virginia from a huge upset. The timeout story, each club has one, but also eight yards separates Virginia from a first down right here. Yeah, eight yards, they win the game. If they don't get a first down here, Florida State's going to get the ball. Groh will work from the shotgun with three wideouts and a bad snap. Ball loose on the ground. They are so fortunate to be able to fall on that ball. I don't know if they were trying to do a direct snap to the back on that play. And you can see George right there say, I don't believe it. I think they were trying to direct snap that time right to Tiki Barber. At any rate, Florida State will get its hands on the football one more time. Florida State will get a chance offensively with a punt coming up. <laughs> and as we'll show in just a second here, they're lucky to be able to punt this ball right now. Will Bryce has done a brilliant job punting tonight for Virginia. And we're going to ask him again to hang one up there and let his group get down and not let Feaster have anything. Feaster, fair catch taken, and this one goes in the end zone. So it's the 20-yard line for Florida State. The reason for the punt is this last play. Tom Lachlan, the center, number 52, forgot or wasn't told that grows in the shotgun. He just snapped it up, and fortunately, Tiki Barber, it was going to be a draw. Had he been just going out for a pass, they wouldn't have got the ball. Tiki Barber scooped it up. Well, when you're trying to beat the number two team in the country, sometimes your butt can go numb, I think, with a minute and a half to go. He didn't feel the quarterback there. Remember, Scott Dreisbach and Michigan in a very similar situation with no timeouts drove the length of the field and scored on the last play to beat him already. This is seeming like deja vu, I think, for this defense. 80 yards away and a minute 37 to work. Canal sets up. Wants a lot of it on the first play. And it's caught inside the 30 by Phil Riley. Oh, I, I don't understand that one at all. I think it's oh, a wait a minute. I don't okay. think he caught it. Well, I'll tell you what, the Florida State sideline thinks he did. Well, one guy said he caught it, and one guy said no, and they're arguing. What do you mean he didn't catch it? I said he did, I said he didn't. Neither one of them have been able to watch the replay. Paul London is the guy that's back there. I don't understand the throw. They went for everything with a minute 30 to go. Two guys on this deep one, Riley. Now the officials are going to bring it back. When in doubt, I guess it's incomplete. Let's see if we can tell with the replay, the benefit of the replay. Riley against London. Who has it? Anybody? I thought maybe if anybody. No, the ball's under his legs right there. If you can roll it back right now. Nobody has the football. That's a goal play. Watch this ball. It's going to go between his legs on the play. Neither play has it. That's a good call. So back it comes second and ten. 
One more look from behind, and you're going to see the ball go loose on the ground right there. It's underneath them, right there, on the ground. Good call. Second and ten, Seminole. Canal fires, and he goes to the same guy, and this one is caught. Well, that's that's what they need. First downs, clocks are going to stop right there. Move the Minute chains. 17 to go. Get it down to their end of the end zone, then you can throw into the zone. Really surprised by that first call to take it all the way down the field and double cover. Florida State obviously needs a touchdown, but they don't even need an extra point if they use all the time. They throw the other way, and they get complete to Cooper, who hasn't caught one in a long time, and he's got another first down across the 45 to the 46. And George Welsh is saying, what can I tell these kids after they lose to Michigan on the last play, Texas on the last play, and we're at the Carolina 25-yard line. What if, what if, what if? Everybody second guesses themselves in these type of games. Tom O'Brien saying, did I tell, did I remind the center of the shotgun? Everybody says, what could I have done differently? First down. Canal, high throw, taken in by Cooper, but he's out of bounds. And Joe Williams was covering. It'll be second down and 10. Remember in college, if you shove the player out of bounds, he is out of bounds. In the pro, if you shove him out, it counts as a kick. Florida State does not even give Virginia's defense a chance to breathe. As soon as that official walks away from that ball, they're ready. Second and 10. Danny Cannell pressured, goes complete to Cooper. And Cooper has got it down to the 41-yard line. That's 42-yard uh, line. It's still good for another first down. Virginia's linebackers in their that zone defense need to back up and make those things happen in front of them. They're getting 15 yard throws that stop in the clock. They need to let them complete a pass and not have the clock be stopped. Canal with a first down. The 43 yard line of Virginia. Back pedals, back pedals. Has all day and now fires sideline high, but is it caught? No, incomplete. Now that's the way you got to play that defense. Those linebackers were at 15 yards, and that's going to force Cannell to throw the ball at a 20 yard, and then people have time to react to it. Bobby Bowden looking on. Mike Grove praying with Tiki Barber on the sideline, I'm sure. And second down at 10, Florida State's offense. Needs a touchdown with 26 seconds left. Done. Nope, they're going to throw wide to Cooper. Out of bounds just in front of the first down marker. It's going to be third down at about two feet. 21 seconds to go. You know, Any we... completion here, though, stops the clock again. Rondé Barber, he's been a busy cornerback tonight. Second down at about a foot. Uh, third down, excuse me. Canal short to Dunn. Dunn broke a tackle. Inside the 20 and down to the 12-yard line. So reminiscent of that play against Florida when he threw the short pass to Dunn and he ran around on Florida and made the plays. 13 seconds. Clock stop while they move the chains. Let's see if Canal just downs one here to get his breath. And three more plays if he does. And he does. Nine seconds to go. Probably will only get off two plays. Dunn has put them in a position, though, that they can throw to the end zone each time. Bobby Bodden, streak of 29 in a row, victories over conference opponents that started way back when they joined the conference. A penalty marker is down. Came down late. I think they're saying that Virginia had too many men on the field that time. That illegal participation on the defense. 12 men on the field, half the distance to the goal. Well, Virginia didn't back. need that. They didn't need to give Florida State that help. Two crucial self-inflicted wounds late in this football game by Virginia. Not knowing they were in a shotgun formation, and then too many men on the field has put the ball down on the six-yard line. Nine seconds to go. And you know what's different now is, now, if you take the ball from under center, you probably can make three quick throws. The shotgun might only give you two throws. At the six-yard line. They're ready to celebrate, but we've got nine seconds left. And there will be no celebration if Florida State scores in the next two plays. That's for sure. Defensive coordinator Rick Lance of Virginia says when you play Florida State, it's like playing a basketball game. You've got to play the passing lanes. He's going to try to fill them here. Canal throws it away. 
One play left. And wait a minute, here comes the student body, and that won't help the cause. Get them off the field. This game's not over. The players from Virginia are waving everybody off the field. One last play. I really think the shotgun cost Florida State one play. Here's the ball game. Virginia leads 33-28. Try to shock the number two team in the country here in Charlottesville. The last play of the game for the third time. You'll know in four seconds who wins it. Touchdown. No. No. They say he didn't make it. Virginia's upset Florida State. The hostile takeover, if you will, of the ACC has come to an end. Virginia has beaten Florida State. And the guy who stopped him was Ellsworth in London. The two safeties were in on that play right at the end of it, I think of it. Here's the final play of the game. Dunn, it appeared to me it was a direct snap to work. Dunn, he came out. Did his knee come down? Did the ball come loose before he crossed the line? A play is made by the safeties. He did not cross it. There you see the ball. He did not cross the line. London and Burnham, number 37, made the play. Another look from another angle. Valiant effort by Dunn on the final play of the ball game. And then the feeling of an upset. So many times, so close two games, and that experience, did it pay off? I don't know, but they sure deserved it. One goal post is already history in Charlottesville. That's the final. You hear more about this upset on SportsCenter. But right now, for Jerry Punch and Gary Daniels and Brad Nessler saying so long from Scott Stadium in Charlottesville, Virginia has upset Florida State.